I believe we are getting ready and situated. A little something, something. A little something, something, something for you to listen to. Well, Narc Abuse TV is getting on the air here on Instagram. Live streaming. Instagram has allowed us to exist here and has welcomed us and has been so kind to us and our show in which you can get some free live streaming shows with as many guests as possible. Uh, we've been doing this for about 16 months and uh, we're approaching at some point uh, well over 350 episodes. Uh, we appreciate you each and every way. Feel free to, as some of you have asked, how can we support you uh, and make a donation? We have a donation purchase that you can make from our merch store. Go to our website, narcabusetv.com, narcabusetv.com. Feel free to donate that way. Get yourself some merch. Feel free to let others know that you are narc free or that you are a narc warrior. Right now, let's get our guests in. No way, this is so cool. Oh, you're being so kind. We did it. 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 You know what? I've been waiting for this. And you, I had a number Me of people once they, once they found out you were coming on the show. Um, yeah, that's exciting. I literally got DMs on you telling me, great choice. So I just Aww, want you to know that. that's cool. Literally. Thank you. Uh, I think nice. I had three or four. Three or four. That That's told super me nice. They thought Love they it. reposted my advertisement. You were coming on, and they were like, "Great choice, Paxton. Great choice." So you oh, got. I a, appreciate that. Thank you. You got a fan club. You got groupies. Mm. <laughs> I love my people, man. I really do. Yeah. They love you back. You know, they love you back. I appreciate Thank you doing you. this. This is our second show today, um, and um, our shows are not scripted. You and I both know that, um, but. Yeah. Uh, they are indeed planned, and I am going to tell you something I didn't tell you before. Uh, tell me. I, I see that, Alisa. Don't, don't, uh, I don't know if you can see the screen. Uh, becoming Alisa, yes. who I yeah. admire. Yeah, oh, I immensely. love her. Yeah. Uh, don't you, man? I, you know what? All three of us should do a show together. Okay, I'm Alisa. In. There it is. I'm in. I'll produce it. I'll make it. I should, <laughs> you know what? I should do, I should do a Zoom live with both of you and open That'd it up to fun. a huge audience. We'll, For we'll sure. talk about I love her it. We'll too. Talk about okay. It. I'm saying that on, on air, and she has no idea. I'm, you know, but I'm throwing her uh, this uh, this uh, opportunity. You're throwing out a line. Together. Yes, that's all I'm going <laughs> to do. I have to tell you this. I, what I was leading up to was this. Uh, yeah, okay, good. She says she's in. Hey, okay, Michelle. Okay, it, uh, uh, the Elisa My Michelle. My left hand sucks. <laughs> uh, the Elisa Michelle hour. That's what I should call it. It's going to take more than an hour. First of all, both of you together. Aww. Trust me. I had to I'm do three talker. shows with her. Yes, I know both of you. Know. <laughs> Wait, all three of us will be that way. That's okay. Cool. It'll do good for the community. Uh, anyhow, what I wanted to mention to you was um, there are a number of things that are on your page that we will not have all the time to get to today. We, we just uh, talked a little bit before the show started, and I kind of let you know what I had in mind. Um, but we're going to get right to it. So everyone... It may seem a little strange what I'm going to do today. You may not be accustomed to me doing this because I really go quite slow. I've never and, uh, done a live at all. I yeah, have no was, expectations yeah. whatsoever. So okay. That's good because You're safe. I'm like, uh, I'm like fly, the person. Man. And if you've never done a live before, I'm the person, the right show to come on. People have Perfect. told me. I don't know. I'm not saying that. People have done a, a number of lives for the first time they did it with me. So hopefully uh, you will enjoy yourself. But I'm going to go a certain rhythm today, everyone, is because I want to maximize the time that we're going to have together. So I'm getting a little situated for what I'm going to do here. And uh, here we go, my friend. Michelle, Let's do it. you have agreed to come on this show so that you and I can work together to, uh, well, spread narc abuse awareness. And yeah, to make sure, it's to make, huge. Right? To make sure that we're, we're having an impact to help others who are dealing with this as yeah. briefly as you can say it, how would you describe your experience when it came to dealing with someone who had narcabusic behavior and traits in your life? How would you describe it? 
brutal. <laughs> in a word, brutal. Yeah, in a word, okay. But, I mean, gosh, I got it from all ends of the spectrum, you know? Like my, my mother, you know, I don't like to use terms of endearment when referring to these people, but it was my mother was the head narc, the oh. henchman, enabler, father. I believe he's an inverted narc, you know, stepping back from wow. it now. And then, mm -hmm. you know, when I was in my young 20s, I became engaged to a narc. You know, these people infiltrate like all areas of our life because they set the foundation of abuse, mistreatment, what we tolerate, and it's just what we gravitate to, unfortunately. It's, it's a terrible cycle, and we don't know that we're in it. So that's my involvement with, that's why I feel so passionate about that. I took a class about narcissistic abuse coaching, and I thought I was going to go that route, but I didn't because I just, you know, it just, it just gets me. Like, I know yeah. you feel that way as well. It's no, like, everyone, we're all in the saying. same boat, you know? Yeah. I repeat, I appreciate and I respect coaches so much. They're so important. I went to college, ironically, I have my master's in, you know, psychology, counseling. Wow. And it's just, I, I had no idea. Like, people speak about how mental health professionals are not equipped to counsel in regard to this topic right, right because it's true like i remember my exposure to narcissism it was a saturday class i was barely paying attention i was barely <laughs> lucid and the professor made a joke like oh i'm narcissistic you know like okay you know and that that's as far as it went was he serious it was a female, and yeah, she mm. was like joking, and it it's not funny. There's nothing no, funny not. about no, narcissistic not. abuse. It's vicious, cruel, it's it's horrible. Yeah, I, so. I like I like a posting that you made here to actually it really complements what you're saying. You have a posting uh that is dated, and by the way, if anybody wants to know, please like, comment, I share, just read follow. something. Like, I'm, comment, share, I'm follow her not, page. I'm trying no, not okay. to. That's okay. But we're gonna, I have a psych degree, too. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it took you and, till you were 44 to. I'm 41 now. <laughs> let me, I forget. Let me, let, me read, let, me read that, let me read that for you. It says, I have a psych degree, but uh, took me until I was 44 to identify my own anarch abuse. That seems to be a running, a running theme that happens. And uh, by the way, I just want you to know, Michelle, you don't look a, a day over 33. So we'll I'll just we'll that. just say that right. To I take that, you. take that. I have to read something to you as I we like move to. into this. Already, uh, everyone that's here, I love each and every one of you. But um, Michelle did tell me that I only have a certain amount of time with her, so we're gonna get in as much as we can. And My then kids move. are getting off the bus, and the yeah. bus we have a so, new bus driver, and she's <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know. I knew you. I knew you were gonna say. I was. You knew I had to interject. Yeah, I, I. I can't I shut my do, mouth. I, knew you were do it. I was. I said, don't. Don't talk about the bus driver. She may be She's listening. So okay, mean, so mean, man. So, She's so anyway. mean. Like I'm okay. in a wheelchair, and I have to like. That's why the bus comes to our house. Thank God, you know. But like, I have to. Like, she has to physically see me. Like, I'm gonna leave my kids unattended. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so, go so I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, this posting that was dated. Uh, by the way, you have a YouTube channel. Tell everybody the YouTube channel name. Oh, yes. It's Bumped, Bruised, and Blessed, just like my Instagram. And, you know, I try to type a lot. I try to be thorough in my posts. Yes. But as you can see, I have so much more to speak about, to speak on. So I like to supplement the Instagram with the YouTube. So I yes. make videos, you know, basically corresponding to all the issues i'm working through i know we're all experiencing that so yes, validation absolutely. has been like the paramount you know you have, you have the to best look at the tool screen. in my healing yeah you have to you have to look at the screen can you see the screen somebody just wrote you something do you see what it says your youtube saved me i love you for saying that 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 means a lot to me that's uh that's, up, from, that's from that's from Lindsay E.L. 
uh, Lindsay L, I guess that is, 77, she says, your YouTube saved me. All right, now we need to go into uh, rescue mode again and say some more of this stuff here that we have that is <laughs> beneficial. Uh, here we go. Uh, you have a posting. That posting January 5th says, narcissists are so predictable. Uh, they oh, deny yeah. everything. They deny everything. Never apologize, and they they want to be selfish. Uh, it says it's like they take advice from a toxic handbook. Now, bear with me. Now, I'm going to read a couple of things, and then you go ahead and uh, just go ahead and start I'll talking about it. I will take it. Yes. Every everybody, uh, Erica, thank you for being here. She's giving some love to you and everyone that's here. Please understand, this is Michelle's first live instagram correct totally okay so everybody we're gonna do a number of things here and then she has to uh go uh pick up uh her kids uh from yeah uh, i'm not going i just stop. have to okay. wheel myself okay. to the front so, door <laughs> so we're getting we're going to get in as much as we can today but believe me she is going to be a regular right here on narc abuse tv network so here we go thank you it says you wrote this and i need you to please comment and expound on it it says i say it often but it's never enough. I truly appreciate this incredible community of fellow victims of narcissistic abuse. We are all healing each other through validation and support is what you write. You also write this swapping war stories allows us to release the burdens we have been bearing for years, even decades. Sharing also provides desperately needed validation to others reading our experiences. Why, there's much more here I'm going to be reading in a moment, but I want to stop right there. Why are these words very important for all of us to hear and know right now? Because if you grew up in a narcissistic, run, dysfunctional unit, mm -hmm. I'd like to say unit as opposed to family because most of us have families now legitimately and love and appreciate them for, yeah. you know, what we believe family should be. But anyway, um, but you grew up all those years, like something's not right. You know, something's mm -hmm. wrong. Like it shouldn't be this way. Shouldn't my mm -hmm. parents love me and care about right. me? And mm -hmm. they don't. And you feel it, man. Like kids are very intuitive. Most mm -hmm. of us are very intuitive. I'm sorry, I'm trying. I have my phone propped up on a weight leaning against my computer, so. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> so I'm trying, like, I'm sorry. So in regard to just the, the validation, it's just everything, you know? Like, we grew up in these environments just knowing something was off, but not being able, like, like I said, I have my degrees in psychology, and... I was I had a natural inclination to, you know, want to understand, you know, the human mind and our behaviors and everything. And it just like narcissists are a totally different species. That's another one of my recent posts. They're just yeah. incomprehensible. Like how could someone, a human being, treat with their own children that way or their partner, somebody that loves them? And that's the crux of it at the end we all the victims we love these people whether they were our parents our partners or whatever and mm -hmm. these people wanted to like destroy us essentially yeah matter of fact uh, you write this and everyone on the screen is agreeing with you a hundred percent for what you wrote as well as what you're saying but let me read this and then comment on this you said this in that same posting it's almost as if narcissists have the same toxic handbook. This yeah. is what you wrote in the comments. Feel free to go to her page, by the way, and uh, take a look at what I'm reading here. You can find it. The terrible encounters we endured with these nightmares was designed to gaslight us. Narcissists seek to psychologically dismantle victims, is what you wrote. We are slowly and strategically trained to question ourselves and to believe that we are the problem. Did you, did you feel that you were the problem as you were existing with those who were trying to systematically and psychologically tear you down? Always, always, in every circumstance, dealing with a narcissist. You know, I, I 
vaguely reference like a peripheral narcissist that I currently deal with as well. Um, thankfully, I've eradicated most narcissists from my life. But as you know, you know, you can't shut everyone out. No. So yeah. Um, yeah. there's one that I continue to have exposure to. But, you know, in terms of my parents, I've gone no contact since August of 2019. No mm -hmm. regrets whatsoever. My only regret is not doing it sooner. And in terms of that relation shit, like, let's get our shit together. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be vulgar, but that's, that's the best word to describe it. Um, in terms of that entanglement, you know, I, I was always meant to feel like there's something wrong with me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. 20 years old, man. I was at the top of my game when I was with this jerk. <laughs> and I had a great wow. job. I Ooh. I was cute. I was <laughs> wait, wait, hold successful. On. Wait, hold on. wait, hold on. Wait, no, you said cute. Hold on a second. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I was cute, man. I had so much going for me. I had a great job, and I was getting my graduate degrees and stuff. And this loser made me feel like the loser it's amazing like i have a reel about it you guys actually reposted it narcissists will take an intelligent person make you think you're stupid they'll yeah, take um thanks erica <laughs> yeah but you, you see it uh, well, let me let me tell everybody because everybody's going to know what it says there when they watch this back but erica how sweet of you she mentions you're still cute girl so, that's my girl yeah <laughs> go ahead you were saying they'll take a person who is making they'll just progress take, in they life. just want to destroy someone because they have that like external locus of control i've mentioned this they view the world as having wronged them in some way so the fault is everyone else's it's not theirs so huh. they seek out to you know, displace their anger, aggravation onto everyone else. So they target us. They find people that they want to emulate, essentially. So mm -hmm. they admire us in some way. They recognize our awesomeness, but then yeah. they want to destroy us because that makes them feel more, that makes them feel better in their juvenile way, but it also mm. makes them you know, feel like important, you know, like if I can hurt you, then that makes me powerful, right? Because I had this impact. It's, wow. it's so twisted and disgusting. But okay, that's... That, that is that is so twisted. But it's something that a lot of people here are recognizing they agree with. Uh, matter of fact, Erica says, uh, the pack coach we will start there first. The pack coach, uh, Anastasia says, I feel you. Um, uh, I uh, about what we're talking about. Um, Erica mentions, yes, they get a kick out of it. Lindsay says yeah. destroyed Destroyed is the perfect word for it. Uh, yeah. Also, um, let's see here. Ladies and gents, of course, as I mentioned, if it's your first time here, maybe you, you don't know, I highlight this to you. Please forgive me for me butchering your Instagram name. But uh, feel free to put in Jane Doe or whatever you want to. If you feel emotionally safe, you want to use your regular name, feel free to do so. Uh, but uh, that looks like GS uh, Trev5678 uh, says also they get off on bringing awesome people down and out uh, is what she says. Uh, Erica highlights uh, so true. They're all agreeing with you that this happens. That's my goal is to just, you know, make us all aware, all victims of narcissistic yeah. abuse. How great we all are. I mean, you can see it in other people. You don't see it in yes, yourself because we no, were true. trained to like yeah. feel badly about ourselves and we've been like cut down for all these years, but I deal with, you know, at people commenting and messaging me and my YouTube channel is up and I'm like, gosh, what great people. There's Amaz no amazing people, better huh? community amazing. out there. Man. Yeah. It's like such yeah. good people. I'm like, it's, it's so sad like that we don't see that because or that you guys don't even see that about yourselves because that's just true. made that's of true. the best stuff like uh, overcoming the disgusting treatment and still being a good person there's tons of instagram posts about that but 
It's true. Like to have been targeted and, you know, psychologically abused by someone, but then to still show up in other people's lives as the good people that you are. And I love, I mean, there's nothing stronger than that. I love what, I love what you say here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to read some more everybody. And then I'm going to finish from this particular posting, but I'm going to read something that uh, I read just a moment ago that you wrote in the same posting. You said swapping war stories allows us to release the burdens we have been bearing for years, even decades, that sentence says. Most people have have been in something they don't recognize they're in, and they literally have been in a war, an emotional war that has taken its toll on them to the point that many feel that they don't want to exist. That's what we talked about in our first show, yeah, my first show with Julia people, earlier. Go uh, ahead, please. No, go ahead, it's, Michelle. It's disgusting. It's just we're the ones that end up carrying the burden of the torment that comes from these narcissists. They're the ones that are not dealing with their trauma, so they construct this grandiose facade, and it's malicious where they they seek out to hurt people, and we're the ones that end up paying for it. They're victims, just genuinely good-hearted, innocent people. Like, I'm in a wheelchair... I guess you can't see it, which is a good thing because it's kind of beat up. But, you know, like I really like so many people that I speak to have autoimmune diseases or physical Mm -hmm. manifestations of this trauma because the body keeps the score. If you guys haven't read that book, it's it's so valid. It's like I'm autoimmune disease. It just makes so much sense to me. It's like. You know, we've been attacked our whole lives, so your own body just becomes accustomed to that. Yeah. And your body's like, yeah, I'm going to attack you too, you know? Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to do what, what has been happening to it. But uh, yeah. I'm going to read something to you now. It's your own words, but they're very encouraging words that you wrote. And then you can talk about these also. You, you wrote this. You said narcissist, uh, again, I'm just going to, Repeat this. Narcissists seek to psychologically dismantle victims. We are slowly and strategically trained to question ourselves and to believe that we are the problem. The narcissist's efforts to berate us involves vilifying everyone except the actual abuser. This enables them to proclaim victimhood. For themselves. That's what they live for. That's like part of their persona that they're trying to construct. You know, they always, they're constantly looking for attention. They're constantly looking for pity or attention in any form that they're able to garnish it. So, and, you know, by vilifying us, they're able to dismantle us as a threat. You know, as the truth tellers, the justice seekers, don't pay attention to her. You know, don't listen to what she has to say. Look at me. Feel bad for me because she's so mean to me. I recently wrote this in a post. You know, my narc mother always used to say, why do you hate me so much? Why are you so mean to me? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I wasn't, I'm I'm not a nasty person. You know, I'm not mean to people. And I don't like you because you treat me terribly, but I don't act that way. You know, like I was always trying to win her love and approval and always trying to do things to I have a hair in my eye. It's killing me. But, you know, I wasn't like they try to make us out to be like these terrible people and it doesn't fit. It's not it right. Fit. It doesn't fit. Okay, that should be the name of a book you write because uh, L- Lindsay says. Coming, Lindsay man. says. Lindsay says Michelle needs to write a book. It doesn't I got, fit. I love that. Don't I you love worry. That. It doesn't fit. I got I'm, books hey, on the horizon. You know, all I'm saying is, be, you know, before you became become super famous and on the red carpet, at least come and do one more show with me before you, you all, know you're at the Oscars all day long, and you're sir. super. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's a great, it just doesn't fit. I mean, fit keyword what they try being to put on walking, it. I want to walk, period. Like, that's my <laughs> end game. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you, right now, despite what it may seem like in a physical aspect, you are walking tall among a lot of people. 
A Thank lot you. of people like you. I, I really mean that when I told you I posted it and so many people responded to me like That's great cool. choice Paxton to have her on the show. Uh, so I am, Thank I'm you. glad I found your page. I appreciate it. I have to read some Likewise. more of your words. Your words were I'm, this. I love that you're doing this because I am very deliberate with my words. You know, that's always, that's believing. always been my, and yeah. when I say nightmare, like you read in the last passage, that's yeah. like the harshest word I could come up with to describe utter defeat. Like I tell my husband that all the time. If I say something is a nightmare, that's like that's the it. worst the word I can assign. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, you, 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 you did use it. Uh, you did use that word. Okay. So everyone, if you're coming in right now and you're, uh, you're seeing me move uh, rather quickly through the show. That's because uh, Michelle uh, needs to be able to take care of something and we only have a limited time with her. And I wanted to make sure we cover some things together because, uh, Michelle, you are so encouraging. Uh, Thank you, you. you. You have such an impact on people. So I'm going to read some more of what you wrote. And, um, yeah, in doing my research and, and looking at your, your information, I, you, you need to write. An Thank anthology you. Of, an anthology I love of books. You need you need volumes of Seriously, books. Seriously, I'm a lot to unpack. I got a so lot of material know, up in I here. <laughs> That's why I, I said you're going to have to come back, or I'm, like I said, you and uh, Elisa and I are going to have to do a show together because there's so much that. information. Uh, you have so much information on your page. You have you have over 700 postings on your page. Yeah, and man. Was, and I, I was just saying to my husband today. I just started this like my passion project and it is, it is my heart. Like I feel this because you got a I've lot of passion. In, you got a lot yeah, of passion because I, I can take a page that has 1200 postings and knock it out in a day and, and go through all of them. Literally comments that I can scroll through and read through them quickly. I got stuck reading your page and They're did like, not get no, past. I, I did not, write let me tell you, intentionally. I did not, I did not get past 200 and some odd posts because I kept reading the comments. The comments God were like, bless you oh, for reading there's like it. three, there's like three posts, if not 10 in one post that you make. There's so many comments yeah. in one post. So we're going to use this post that you have that I'm reading now as the entire show, because the next thing that you write is, is this? you say that again, I'll repeat a little bit that I mentioned the narcissist efforts to berate us involves vilifying everyone except the actual abuser. Yeah. This enables them to proclaim victimhood for themselves as we support one another and share. These are your words. You, you type this. I am always shocked by the striking similarity in our story. Do they learn talking about the narcissist? Do they learn their malice from a toxic textbook manual? It's true. It's like when we share our story and when I read pe and I read every comment, I'm always like, it always upsets. Me. I'm trying to like block the glare. I'm like, but it <laughs> you're doing always, great. You're doing great. It always upsets me. Like when I read other people's horrible stories yes. and I mean, yes. don't get me wrong. Like I'm sure people read my stuff and they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe <laughs> they did. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, that's how we feel about each other. We don't like feel that way. We don't give ourselves that kind of grace. But when we read about other people's abuse, we're like, oh my God, that's horrible. And, but the crazy thing is they're so similar. It's like they all do the same stuff because they all have that twisted, disordered mentality. That's why really? they're able to categorize it in the DSM, the diagnostic statistical manual when it comes to life it can be challenging if a person doesn't know that they're in abuse though oh yeah yeah what do you what do you suggest what do you suggest for someone and our, our audience has been changing here is getting younger uh, i'm talking yeah. about 16 18 years of age it's showing in our analytics uh, that we have that younger women are Googling this and finding out that they've been a part of an abusive family dynamics or a number of things. What's your advice to someone just beginning this journey and they're just now watching this for the first time and they're in a room now of maybe seasoned people who've been talking about this for a while 
they can't wrap their brain around it. What are your words of advice to them? God bless you guys. You're way better off than I was way back when. But knowledge is power. Learn everything that you can to validate what you are experiencing, what you know is wrong inside, but you need to validate it from an outside source to really give yourself that credit because narcissists, as I was saying in those posts, they dismantle your intuition. You know, we all have it. We're all born with it. And we know better. And we're intelligent people that narcissists just try to smoke in mirrors everything. They'll say they love us, but then they treat us like garbage. You know, we yeah. know better. But yeah. learning about it, reading about it, so whatever outlet works best for you. Like when, I, when the narcissist dumped me back in 05, thank God. Again, when that wait, happened. Wait, wait, Michelle, wait, wait, Michelle, wait, 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 we got to hold on a second. <laughs> Round of applause because you got free. All I did, what I went to Barnes and Noble way back when, when that, you know, yeah. was popular. I went to the self help love section and okay. I got all these books. Narcissistic abuse wasn't even on the radar back then. So it was, you said 2005, right? Okay. Yeah. It was all about like controlling people, emotionally abusive people. Everything fit all of the diagnostic criteria was there. All of yeah. the evidence was there, but the label was not there. So I still have these books on my shelf, man. Like wow. the one, and I have every page highlighted like wild and it's wow. just when you educate yourself and you validate yourself, it's everything. It's all you need. When you started to do research, you had your Barnes and Nobles moment in time. And it became your resource to get information and knowledge. What was it like for you when you started truly processing what psychologically and emotionally, strategically had been done to you? Describe it's a that. disgusting. Re it's a disgusting relief, you know. Like my husband and I said that about losing our son. It was like a disgusting relief, and it's a horrible choice of words. But it's like the validation again. I can't stress it. And it's priceless. It's everything. It's like I'm not crazy. This is really happening. You know, but it's a relief because it's like it's over and it was torture and it was abuse. But when I was able to, you know, pinpoint that it was in fact abuse, I was like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's why I was so miserable for so long trying and to make it work. You were in this war. As I, I said earlier, I read some of your words, you, you know, these war stories that we have now, a person can have. You were in this war, but you didn't see it per se in the moment. But once you were, as you said, 2005, discarded, you got some knowledge, you began to process it. When did you decide, though, that you weren't going to be quiet anymore and you weren't going to be silent? When did that kind of kick in and you became this force to be reckoned with and started really speaking out with your YouTube and everything? when did that kick in? Okay. Yeah, like I said, it all started in 2019 when I finally caught contact, when I really was able to yeah. confirm that this, like I got the validation from the class that I took and I was like, you know, all those years of just, bottling things up and taking it like I was the black sheep I was always the black sheep and I was always just punched down and kicked down and like you're the bad one and you're the problem and all the other things so I was silenced for all that time so now I'm just like I won't shut up and like I said I did not go the route of being a coach because I just want to make things available to to all of us victims because we all, everybody deserves to be educated and to learn about this stuff. And I love 
being able to use my education and my communication skills to convey yeah. all of this. And you're doing it. You're doing an excellent job. It was 2019. Did you say August? If I got that correct, that you you went yeah. no contact with your parents. Yeah, I mean, I started to try to, but you all know it's never a clean break. There's <laughs> engulfing parents, and then there's ignoring parents. And ironically, mine are the worst of everything. It's like they ignored me, acted like I didn't matter, and I had no value to them until they wanted something. You know, they wanted to cherry pick my life or events out of my life that they wanted to exploit or use yeah. for attention mm -hmm. and so your achievement so your achievements and what was happening in your life and what was happening with your family they would cherry pick it so that they could go and tell their friends to or try look to how, look good look, yeah. look, look good and stuff like that you know a lot of people experience that but they think that's just the way the family's supposed to go but that's not normal correct no, man, your parents are supposed to be like, if you have children now, like you do, obviously, yeah, but do, any, yeah. anyone watching, yeah. like That's you have normal. kids now, you love yeah. your kids, you're proud of your kids, you, good or, you good genuinely, or up or down, yeah, up or down, yeah. good or, right, right. you genuinely want just, just the happy want to see them succeed, man, yeah. and you're, you're genuinely, authentically proud of them, you love yeah. them, you don't use them. And that's yeah. what narcissistic parents do. They use you. Yeah. That's when, I guess, back to the, I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay focused here. But the no, pivotal, no, no, there is, there is no staying focused with you and I together. Now no. imagine when, when, when we get Where? the, okay. Well, all I will three of totally us get go together. off the you know rails, man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, we're going to have fun. Go ahead. I'll work on it. I'll, I'll produce it and put it together. But anyhow, go but ahead. You I were totally, saying. like, that's when I, that was a pivotal moment when I started to go no contact or when I, decided like enough is enough man i deserve better my family deserves better that was wow. when i was like oh the hell with this i'm not sitting on this anymore i was like yeah. i'm i i can't not put this out there and like i said it yeah. was just a passion project type of a thing you know not, we're all not anymore not anymore you you you're a force to be reckoned with uh Thank on you. many times on many time zones and you're getting so much love uh, here on the screen. Uh, others are, are talking about what you're mentioning right now. I do have to tell you that, uh, um, let's see here, Lindsay is saying this is so empowering. And, uh, of course, awesome. uh, Amber is here, and Amber is mentioning that I'm not crazy. Uh, many are finding out that they're not crazy. <laughs> many, many are it's coming amazing. to understand. It's amazing. It is that, such an yeah. amazing, yeah. like, sanity. Our sanity is priceless. Yeah. We deserve it, and these people are the disordered ones, but they try to impose it on us by mistreating yeah. us, by vilifying us. You know, it's yeah. it couldn't be farther from the truth. They're so the anybody, ones. Anyone that need is here. Anyone is here, and you're wondering to yourself. I'm. It's be safe to say if you're if you're wondering and you come on this show, I am telling you now, you are not crazy. Okay, let's just get Thank this you. out the way right now. There is like nothing that. wrong with you except what is normal to every imperfect human being on this planet. Exactly. Like nobody's perfect, is, but yeah, some uh, some emotional leech uh, has has latched on themselves to you and is trying to suck the juicy good stuff out of you uh, and yeah. look as if they're the originator of it and you're persecuting them. Uh, so look, let's do this. I'm going to read something to you now. We have gone 40 minutes, so we, I know we have a little bit more time left. And everybody, if you just got in, I'm going to repeat it again. Um, I got Michelle a phone only... to pick with a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to get into that, but I know we don't have time. But um, um, she does have uh, something that she needs to do in regards to her children, so we have only a limited time, but believe me, she will be a regular. You, you will always have an open chair uh, here at Narc Abuse TV Thank Network, you. Michelle. Uh, only a few people can have those. I love all of my guests, but you will, can be able to come back on the spur of the moment if you just go, hey, Paxton, I can I go on right that. now? I'm